Yeah, well, I can say that finals hit me pretty hard, but right now I'm done with university and I have a lot of time uh, for the MSU. Uh, so for the people that are new to this channel, the MSU is the material switching unit. Uh, it's based on the MME2 by Prusa, but with key improvements to reduce both on, uh, to reduce costs and also to improve on reliability. So the cost reduction has been achieved. So we are currently, it can be built for 70 ish US dollars. Uh, but in terms of reliability, there are still a few things we could improve on uh, and more on that later. So first off, what is new? So I had to replace the carriage on the x-axis of my ANE 10 because the wheel size uh, from the original printer was, it wasn't just not correctly designed. And this printer is probably one of the worst printer, it is the worst printer I've ever owned. Uh, so I decided to replace it completely. So I had to, new des to design or use a new base plate. Um, and with a new BLS plate, probably comes uh, a new cooling solution. So uh, while I was adding, uh, I added, I decided, hey, hey why not ch change the hot end as well? And uh, since Tree Moon, so uh, you can, in, in the Discord server, he's one of the people that is currently building uh, the MSU, was having a lot of problem with his uh, E3D V6. And since the E3D V6 is one of the most popular hot ends right now, uh, I decided that it was a good idea to uh, install it and try to make it compatible with the MSU. Uh, so a new hot end also means a new cooling solution. And I ended up choosing the Hydra Fan Duct and Tool Chain System by Siphon Booth. Uh, I will have it linked down below, uh, which turned out amazing. So I printed it with Carbon Fill PTG, and uh, this gives it that uh, more matte look and also hides the layer line extremely well. So I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Compared to the previous cartridge, which was also uh, a different one from the original one, uh, it, it glides super smoothly onto the x-axis and there's barely any friction at all. On top of that, I also had to change the mainboard. Uh, so the original mainboard was in, was in SKR Pro V1.1 and the cooling fan side of things and also one of the motors were starting to act weird. Uh, so there were probably a short uh, somewhere in the board or at least something that fried. Uh, I couldn't find it even if uh, I, I tried quite a bit and uh, I decided to change it. So um, why did that short happen? Uh, it's probably because my workbench is a mess very, very quickly. So I'm <laughs> kind of messy overall. And um, I had it non-enclosed. So it was just sitting on that table uh, with everything plugged in um, because I needed easy access to just experiment, plug in new things, remove cables, add cables, just I needed to have easy access to it and I was also kind of lazy so I, I didn't have take the time to print an enclosure and wire everything properly so that no short could happen. Uh, and what I imagine happened is that just something conductive that was on my table came into, into contact with the board and uh, shorted it. So um, yeah, my fault on that one. Uh, I ordered a new one and it came so I got the SKR V1.2 because I still really like the SKR Pro. Uh, it's in really great board and if you can afford it I would honestly recommend it um, and uh, yeah so I changed it I printed an enclosure I redid the entire wiring uh, also for the wiring I finally got myself a crimping kit as well as uh, heat shrink tubing uh, so I was able to get some really clean results so I crimped uh, a few new motors um, with proper GXC connectors on, on, on there um, and uh, I put heat shrink tubing on uh, any cables that were exposed. Uh, so hopefully we won't have the same experience uh, that I had uh, on the previous board. I am also currently taking a new approach uh, to the merger. I'm not sure yet which one is better and which one we're gonna keep. That's why on GitHub right now, there are the two different options. Uh, but yeah, I have a new approach. So the old approach, if you can remember, uh, are those five PTFE tubes coming out of the merger up to the MSU and then uh, connected to the extruder with as little PTFE tube as possible. The, the filament change is gonna be somewhat faster uh, because you only have to retract it by 10, 10 20 centimeters um, and you don't have to retract it up to the top of the MSU. So this is one of the key advantages of uh, this solution. Uh, now it has a few disadvantages, um, one of them being there's a lot of uh, PTFE tubings com coming out of it and it's just a waste of PTFE tubing and also it adds a lot of drag and resistance to the extruder when it moves. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really heavy solution, takes quite a bit of time to print, um, requires six PTFE couplers um, 
and it was causing some issues um, with some people in terms of the clearances on the inside. Um, now it had also another problem is that you can imagine that if you have your MSU up there holding the stuff and then the extruder over there, let's say that this is your print height because the MSU is on top of your printer, uh, you can't really go higher than this. If you go higher than this, you start folding the PTFE and I'm playing a lot of force here. So you had almost that amount of space that was uh, used and, and taken over by the merger. So with this merger, you were losing like 20, 25, maybe even 30% of your build and print volume, depending on what printer you had. Um, so not ideal. Uh, that's why this new merger uh, was created. Um, so if you remember correctly, my very, very, very first attempts at a merger uh, were actually quite similar to that. Uh, so having the merger connected directly to the MSU uh, and then having a single PTFE tube going up to the uh, extruder and nozzle. Uh, well, this was one of the very early prototypes. And as you can see, it looks very bad. And if you install that onto the MSU, so uh, on, that mer on, that, on that merger and on that prototype, I didn't have the screw and fixation system yet but basically you would have four screws over there connecting it to the uh, MSU. Uh, you can see that this can break very easily. You have a lot of leverage over there. So which this means that you could break it easily and structural integrity of the, the, the device was not ideal. Even if yes, I'm gonna agree, it wasn't likely it would break it. Uh, it also looked very bad. Uh, it's a rectangle, not, not nothing special. Uh, and I wasn't really happy with the solution. At that time, I didn't also really, I wasn't good at 3D modeling. I'm still not good, <laughs> but I've made quite a bit of progress, meaning that I'm not as bad. Um, and um, yeah, the, the solution was just not working well. Uh, that's when Paul Lewis sent me uh, one of his merger models slash ideas, uh, and it worked real well first shot, so I decided to go with it. And uh, this is what resulted in this. Uh, and it worked extremely well. This is what we have had our first successful print with. Uh, but right now I'm trying to get a few improvements uh, because some people um, like Tree Moon in the Discord are having problem with the current merger. Uh, and I realized that this is also what is causing me some of my real deadly problems. Um, so uh, the new approach, uh, so on, on this one, the approach for the very early uh, modeling. So the strategy was just create a rectangle, a cube, and then kind of dig and cut inside of it all the tubes and the paths that you want for your filament. On this one, the approach was uh, completely different and a lot better. That's where I've kind of realized that I made quite a bit of improvement. So um, instead of uh, going with a, a structure that I would cut into, I created the skeleton of the different paths that I wanted for the filament uh, and of the structure I wanted. And then on top of that, I added the material that I needed to have enough uh, structural integrity. And uh, that was stood in this. So it has a, a slight downwards angle uh, that just to allow the PTFE tube to have an easier path uh, up to the nozzle. Uh, this is also gonna be in combination with the new mounts, more on that later. Uh, so yeah, as I said initially, I'm not sure which solution is better, um, but I'm gonna give a shot at this one, add improvements. And it seems that in terms of reliability, uh, it seems to be better since in this solution, you have only uh, one failed point, which is over there. That's when uh, the filament goes into uh, the, the PTFE tubing and goes through the coupler. So it would be one breaking point. Um, on that merger, you had a lot more breaking points as you can imagine. So I've also started working on the filament flow sensor. Uh, so the filament flow sensor uh, will allow to detect any filament change failures. Uh, so that should improve a lot on reliability. Well, it will not improve on reliability. It would just mean that when you have a filament change failure, you'll be able to fix everything and uh, start the print again. Uh, and it will also act as a filament uh, runout detection sensor. And uh, it will be able to detect uh, clogs and jams that are not MSU related. So it's a really, really good uh, upgrade. And right now I'm designing it as part of the merger itself. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm kind of extending uh, the, the output, adding uh, the full merger with the, the sensor wheel on there. Um, and it's gonna be directly part of the merger. And also I won the Creality Modification Challenge. Um, so a huge thanks to Robert Schuler, uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, sorry for butchering your name if I'm doing so. 
because he is the one that told me that uh, the Crelly Modification Challenge was a possibility uh, for this project and I didn't even know that it existed. Uh, and uh, yeah, he told, commented I think two days before the deadline and was like, holy, yeah, that works perfectly with my project. Uh, so uh, I put my work on there and uh, it seems that uh, everything went well since uh, I won, uh, I'm gonna put the title, which I, I don't know exactly which one it is, um, on the screen right now. And the price for it is a 3D printer. Uh, I also don't really know which printer it is uh, because depending on what post uh, I on what post I look at, uh, the, the, the printer seems to be a different model. Um, so, I mean, I guess we'll see. Corelli told me that they should be sending it in the uh, next couple of weeks. Uh, so that's really good news and I'm super happy so thanks for all of you guys uh, who followed this uh, and who are watching this and to anyone that voted for me in this contest um, and uh, yeah if you like this project and this video uh, make sure to subscribe also if you want to build it for yourself or just want to stay updated keep track of this project join the discord server I will have it linked down below this is the easiest way to get in contact with me uh, to get help, uh, to talk with other people that have attempted this build. Um, so yeah, join join the Discord server. Um, and uh, if you want to take a look at the code or the 3D files or anything that I talked about in this video, everything is on the GitHub. So I will also have it linked down below. Uh, and uh, yeah, see you guys next time.